Yes. Well, now, listen. Why is sine squared plus cosine squared equal to 1? Take any one of your shh, take any one of your ordered pairs on the unit circle. Take any ordered pair on the unit circle. Take the first number, which is your cosine, square it. Take the second number on the ordered pair, that's your sine, square it. Add them up. You get one. Square root the one. What do you get? One. So remember, the unit circle, every point on the circle is one from the origin. <coughs> So that's where the number of I mean, it's Pythagorean theorem working with the unit circle. Sine squared plus cosine squared will be a distance of one from the origin. Yeah, always. So that's where it's coming from. It's not something that was just arbitrarily made up. It is. Yes. Okay. That looks like a quadratic, okay? It looks like a quadratic, except it would be like having two variables in the quadratic. So we need to switch one of them into the other. So either we have to switch the cosecants into cotangents or the cotangent into cosecant. Which one can we switch? Only that. There's nothing you, look at your cotangent. The only two things you can switch to for cotangent would be 1 over tangent or cosine over sine. <coughs> and neither one of those is a cosecant, so that didn't help us. But if you look at cosecant squared, what could you do? Look at that third Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to? Oh. So I'm asking you to look at, that is the third Pythagorean identity over there, right? One. Oh, we're all going to judge Mr. Cap. Is that better? I'll remember that. When, when you guys get minus 20, it's because I didn't like your... Your S's. <laughs> so cosecant squared, I'm going to change that to 1 plus cotangent squared of x. I still have minus cotangent of x and minus 3. So that's the only substitution that I made. So this would be cotangent squared of x first minus cotangent of x, and the only like terms, those are the only like terms, what's 1 minus 3? Okay, how does this factor? I need a cotangent at the beginning. What are the factors of 2? 1 and 2. Which one has to be positive? Which one has to be negative? So we add up the negative 1 in the middle. Negative there, positive there. And that is factored. Now you can picture this. A lot of you are like, are you setting these things equal to 0? Well, now I can take this and set it equal to 0 and figure out what are the critical values for it, which we'll do in later problems. But. <laughs> Add, add. It's telling us to add. So I'm just going to make a little room here. So what I'm going to do is take the two denominators. I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to take this one. I usually have a nice big tangent that I go on about this, but this is this is not cross multiplication. One plus cosine of theta, sine of theta. 
whole tilt test. I mean, that's almost perfect. <laughs> this is not cross multiplication. This is sneaky form of one. Okay? You just take this denominator, top and bottom over here. You take this denominator, top and bottom over here. Sneaky so form of one. Let's switch color. a lot of the, what, why are you doing all that? Well, what am I doing? I'm, I'm creating a common denominator. This one has a one plus cosine. What does it need? It needs that sign. So I multiply the bottom by sine, then I have to multiply the top by sine. This denominator has sine. It needs a one plus cosine. So I multiply the bottom by one plus cosine, multiply the top by one plus cosine. So when you look at the purple, notice what I've done. I did not distribute the denominator so you can see the two parts on each side. However, up here, I did distribute the cosine to both of those. So now in purple, do I or do I not have a common denominator? Yes, you yes, I do. So we can add things together. So you end up getting sine squared of theta plus cosine of theta plus cosine squared of theta all over sine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. We are not done. So take a look at it. All I did is <coughs> common denominator. That's the denominator and the answer. Add this stuff in the numerator. There weren't any like terms. What do you guys know? What do you guys know about that? Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. They're not, they're not next to each other, but it doesn't matter because adding is commutative, meaning that things can move around. So if you want to put them next to each other, sine squared plus cosine squared. So what I really have now is one plus cosine of theta all over sine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. What's 1 over sine of theta? That is the answer. Way better. Now go back to the original problem. If you had to take the derivative of the original compared to this one, you would like that one better. We're going to have to work a little bit faster. All it tells us, rewrite it so it's not a fractional form, but it really needs to simplify again. Now, one of the tricks... You know, you're looking at this, you're going, there isn't a Pythagorean identity to simplify. There isn't, I can't do any of the factoring tricks that we've already done. Um, I don't have another term to do a common denominator. So what this one is, I, is using the idea of conjugates that we have in the past, we're going to multiply by 1 minus sine of x over 1 minus sine of x. So... We're going to use a sneaky form of 1, but we're going to write the conjugate of the denominator, right? Yeah. And I'll... So, uh, then what you have is 1 minus sine of x on top, 1 minus sine squared of x on the bottom. So remember when you multiply the bottom, you go to foil it. Because it's the idea of conjugates, all you have to do is first and last. 1 times 1, 
sine x times negative sine x. That's <coughs> the middle term of the OI will cancel itself out, right? It'll add up to zero. You have one positive, one negative. Okay? See anything? Yes. Where? Here, bottom. The bottom is 1 minus sine squared. So you take the number one identity, and you take sine of x squared to the sine squared of x to the other side. So now I have 1 minus sine of x over cosine squared of x. Okay. This gets a little bit weird, but when you, it's a hard breaking apart. When you have more terms in the numerator than you do on the denominator, you can take each individual term in the numerator and put it over its denominator. So we're getting close. What is 1 over cosine squared? Secant squared. What are you going to do with sine over cosine squared? So maybe some of you might do this. So you might split it up into kind of a factoring. The bottom is cosine squared, which can be a cosine and a cosine. And then write the factor at the top, the sine. So I just wrote sine times 1. What is the first one? What's sine over cosine? Sine over cosine. Tangent. What's 1 over cosine? Secant. You can leave it there. Then the instructions at the top were to get rid of fraction form. So I don't have any more fractions left. So we're done. Some people may, some people may factor a secant to the front. I don't. I, Either one you look at, they're the, they're the same thing. It's not in a fraction. 